between my heart and my God many times. This morning as I was worshiping the Lord, I was thinking about it. Your heart can be very far away from God, yet you may do the right thing. You may do the right thing in the right way, but not with the right intention. Our inspiration for worship must come from love, Je loving Jesus. If there is no love for Jesus, and all that we do can be just an activity, can be just a performance. So I pray that even as I was examining my own heart, how much my heart is connected to Jesus, how much my heart is focused on the cross, how much my heart is filled up with the hope of his coming. These are the things that must really inspire me to worship the Lord and to lift up his name. Praise God for his work in our life. And these reminders are constantly should be given to us because we need to know when we are in God's presence, we need to be true worshipers. That's what Jesus said. The Father seeks for true worshipers, not just for any worshipers. He seeks for true worshipers. And what are the, who are those true, true worshipers? True worshipers who worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. The spirit in truth, our spirit connects to uh, not just not just physically, but worshiping the Lord with our spirit from the depths of our heart, from the inmost being, the rivers of uh, Lord will flow, the rivers of life will flow through us. So the spirit and the truth of God, let us become such worshipers as we come into God's presence. Worship is always a big battle, like prayer is a battle. You know, worship uh, is... Uh, so, but if we are, have that connection, that relationship with the Lord, I believe worship will be very spontaneous, not only in times of corporate worship, but also in times, any times you can make that as an opportunity to worship the Lord. Worship is giving due worth to the Lord. That's all. How you give that, it all depends upon you, how you want to do that. This morning, I want to take a uh, beginner's uh, message on, we have been looking past weeks on Ezekiel, but the, lo the Lord laid him into my heart this, uh, something, uh, to speak something about a topic probably many of us may not be very happy about it, and, but that's something which the Lord put into my heart. That's what I feel so, uh, that God wants us to know and understand about this particular topic, which is suffering. And that's something we just maybe not very comfortable because we don't want to go through suffering. But as we read the Bible, uh, we know that there is a plan of God through every suffering that the Lord takes us through. No suffering in a Christian is in vain. Every suffering has got a purpose of God. And you know, we, so this morning I'm just going to only not preach too much uh, because we have very less time also before us. But I'm just going to take some verses for us to meditate later on when you go from here to meditate upon these verses and have a right understanding of suffering, especially in a Christian's life. Suffering is very much a part of a Christian life. Suffering is inevitable. You cannot just say no to suffering because God has a purpose in bringing every sufferings into our life. Any finished product, if it is not going through a process, it is not a finished product. Our Christian life also, it goes through a process by which we are to come out as a good finished product. And so, the kind of suffering the the, uh, the the different kinds of suffering that we all go through can be very, very different. Some may go through little, some may go through very severe suffering. But why? We have no answer for that. James simply says that when we go through different kinds of sufferings, there are different kinds of suffering. There are emotional suffering. There are physical suffering. There are sufferings in many realms of many areas of our life. It could be in our family. It could be in our relationship. It could be in our profession. It could be with your skills. Many, many kinds of sufferings we all go through. But 
Suffering is very much a part of Christian life. You must, we, we must learn to treasure troubles rather than being taken aback by the troubles and trials in our life. We must treasure those, uh, treasure those troubles. Because yesterday as I was speaking to a brother in this church, and so he was saying, I didn't understand why God was taking me through the suffering. He was talking about his childhood. But after now, he's 30 or 35 now, so he was saying, I look back and I see those moments which God took me through those difficult times, challenging times, and I thank the Lord for the things that he has taught me. So like there are seasons in, uh, in our living, like the summer, winter, autumn, spring, fall, in the same way there are seasons of sufferings for every Christian. That, that is seasonal. Paul says the momentary suffering, it's just a sim little time compared to eternity. But we go through all those sufferings. So we, in the same way, we have sufferings in our life. You, can, you should seize the season of suffering rather than the season of suffering seizing you. We must catch hold of that opportunities. And there must be a particular kind of response in the times of our suffering. But let me tell you, Peter, Paul, Jesus, the church, first century church, in the book of Acts, they all went through suffering. And if they went through suffering, how can we think that we don't have suffering? Yes, it is true that Jesus took the sufferings for our for our sufferings on the cross. But that does not mean we don't have to go through sufferings. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12, it says that Peter is saying, suffering is something, uh, suffering is not something strange for a Christian. Beloved, do not be surprised. Thank you for that verse. Uh, put, put it as quick as possible. Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which comes upon you to prove you. Don't be surprised because it's, suffering is not a strange thing as, through, as though something strange were happening to you. So when suffering comes, it's not something strange. It has to be there in our life. Don't think that why, Lord, suffering? Well, we must, uh, we must ask the question, what, Lord, God, what do you want me to do when I go through this season of suffering? Not ask the Lord question, why? First Peter chapter 2, 21, it says that we are called to suffer. For, the, for, for to this, you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow his footsteps. We are called for suffering. You know, you would like to uh, uh, receive that into your life. We are all called for suffering. There is an element of suffering in everybody's life. We are called for suffering. Paul also says a similar thing in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. I'm just quickly just going through all these verses. I don't have to preach too much on this because his verses are very clear. And I'm sure that he who began a good work in you will bring to completion at the day of Jesus Christ... Is it, it talks about, I think it is verse 5 or 6. Somewhere it says, we are called for suffering. Paul is talking about, we are called for suffering. Peter talks about it. Jesus says in 1633, John 1633, we all know these verses. In this world, you will have tribulation, struggles. In this world, you will have. I have said this to you, that in me you have peace. 1633. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Take heart. I have overcome. You will have. We are not insulated. A Christian is not insulated from sufferings. I wish we were, we were all. Some people think that, no, when I am born again and baptized, I'm insulated from all suffering. I wish we, it was true. But that's not true. We Ah, we, we rather go through more sufferings than the people of this world. As I said, there are different kinds of suffering, physical, emotional, many, many kinds. Some people physically suffer a lot, and we don't understand why. 
we pray for healing, we pray for deliverance, but sometimes the kind of healing and the kind of deliverance that God brings is not the way that you and I can think about. Yesterday I was listening to this testimony of a, uh, of a brother who was talking about his mother's healing. His mother knew very well, the father knew very well, they are going to be healed. Yes. And even on that day, she was going through uh, cancer, breast cancer for a long time. And she knew the Lord is going to touch her and heal her completely. The day, one day, early morning, she got up dressed up and everything. And she said, God is going to heal. I am healed, she said. I am completely healed. I know the Lord has touched me. I can see the Lord. I can see the light coming to me and touching me and I'm healed. But the very next moment, she went to be with the Lord. The kind of healing, please understand. The kind of healing that the Lord wants to bring to some of us is not the way that you and I can imagine. That's exactly a very perfect healing that the Lord has given to her. I believe so. That's a perfect healing. It's not a temporary healing. It's an eternal healing that the Lord has given to her. So sometimes when we pray for, see, I'm not against he healing. I believe I myself has been healed from a dreaded sickness for the last, I mean, eight years I was a sick person. God healed me totally in the year of 1982. And since then, I've never been sick. I don't say that I will not be sick. That's the kind of healing I believe in, in, in supernatural healing. So there are different kinds, physical suffering, emotional sufferings. What is God's purpose in suffering? I'm just going to take these verses to you for you to meditate. What is God's purpose? Why we suffer? Why Christians, believers? I'm talking especially about believers, Christians going through suffering. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself with the same thought, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. It's to help you to make you, it's to help you to be an overcomer of sin and the fight of your flesh. Suffering God allows in your life so that you are, if you have the right response in the suffering, the Lord wants you to be an overcomer. Over sin is the fight against your flesh. You, he allows you to go through suffering because in that suffering, you may learn to trust the Lord. You may learn to yield yourself totally to the Lord. Every battle of the mind, you will bring it into the presence of the Lord. And the Lord will give you an overcoming spirit and strength to overcome every battle of your mind. And the battle of the flesh in you is to make you an overcomer of the sin. Psalm 100, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 1 Peter 5 and 10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. Amen. Why is suffering? It's very clear over there. Can we say that? Why God allows us to go through suffering? To restore, to establish, and to strengthen you. Praise the Lord sufferings that the Lord allows in your life is never to destroy you. It's never to harm you because God says, I know the plans that I have for you. It is not for your harm. It is for your good hope and a good future. It is never for harm. It all depends how you perceive suffering. It all depends how you respond to the sufferings. But if in the sufferings, if you respond in a wrong way, yes, it may not strengthen you. It may break you. It may, I know some people who have backslidden because of suffering. Who have gone away from the faith because of suffering. God's intention was never to, for that. But the, the way they reacted to sufferings were wrong. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Praise the Lord. 
When you are going through suffering, you are not to see what is your present situation. What is that kind of trouble? You are being prepared for an eternal glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's something very exciting for me. When I'm going through suffering, when I'm going through several kinds of sufferings in life, I'm saying, Lord, thank you for preparing me. Because the glory that God wants to give to you and clothe you with is so powerful that you need to be prepared for that. Never say no. Never say why. Say as the Lord God, yield in the times of suffering. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. We all know this verse. I want to know Christ, that I may know Christ in the power of his resurrection and share in his suffering to become like him in his death. Sufferings is, uh, is, is a way by which God is preparing you so that you may become like him, become like Jesus Christ. Because our Lord, our, the founder of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ, the king of our life, he, when he came into this world, he suffered. So Paul is saying, I want to become like him. Psalms 119 verse 77, 71, sorry. Psalm 119 verse 71. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Sam is saying, Lord, I thank you that I went through this affliction that I may learn your truths. These truths are not just to be in the conceptual level, but this truth has to be in a very practical level in your life. Because to be, for it to become a practical, then you will have to go through suffering. When you go through suffering, you will learn, yes, this word is true. You know, your performance in your life will be much, much better if you're experiencing the truths of your life. But if there is no experience of the truths in your life, you will still perform, but it's empty, empty performances. It's just void. You may perform very well in life, but if you're not experiencing a truth in your life, then you will never know how to really perform. The performance is not from your heart. It's not from your spirit. So Paul, that's why Sam is saying, God, I thank you that I went through this affliction because I was able to learn your word. I was able to experience your word. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. These two, three verses, just Romans, it, it, I mean, it's so powerful. We can just share about this word at least for an hour or two. This is very powerful. This is what Paul is saying. More than that, we rejoice in our suffering. How can rejoicing and suffering go together? It's just two different poles. But Paul is saying, we rejoice in our suffering knowing that because we must know there is a purpose of suffering. What is the purpose of suffering? Paul is saying, this knowing that suffering produces what? Endurance, perseverance. And endurance produces what? Character. Character you cannot buy from the market. I wish I could buy integrity from the market. I wish I could buy, you know, good character from the It is not. It is not bought with price. You have to pay a price. And the paying the price is sometimes we go through severe, severe sufferings. When you endure, when you persevere through sufferings, through trials, through troubles of life, God is building what in you? His character. His character, the likeness of Jesus, because we are originally made in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. God is longing to see His image in you. Not you being a good person, no. God is not just see, desiring that you will be a nice, good, humble, simple person, no. God wants you to be like Him in every sense, in every way. Your speech, your actions, your behavior, your going, everything should be becoming. And he allows you to go through suffering. So suffering, Paul is saying, to produce perseverance, to endurance, that you'll be more enduring. You will have the strength to endure through severe trials. And because through this endure, uh, endurance, you will build good character. You will build patience. 
one of the good character that we build in our in that in, as we persevere is patient to be patient and to be waiting upon the lord and it gives us hope first peter chapter 167 first peter chapter 1 6 and 7 in this you rejoice though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials verse 7 so that the genuineness of your faith more precious than gold which though perishable is tested by fire may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ praise the lord when you are suffering here it is one of the thing is that when you're suffering it is actually a test of your genuineness of your, of your faith those who go through suffering god is testing them not that god does not know that your faith is genuine or not god wants you to know that your faith is genuine or not not for him to know he knows it already god wants you to realize or probably others also to realize that your faith is genuine or not because so many people i tell you i mean uh, that they claim to have faith in jesus christ but that at simple little sufferings of life or trials they give up i mean that's a human tendency human nat- we are human beings so 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 weak in our emotions in our thinking but at that time people don't think about these verses they don't turn to god they don't seek the face of the lord and ask the lord god give me a word give me a, give me your strength i seek you and help me to see you more clearly in the midst of all tribulations and all the trials that i go through so suffering your faith because it is genuine it is being refined through fire second corinthians chapter 4 8 and 10 second corinthians 8 and 10 10 we are afflicted in every way but not crushed or perplexed perplexed but not driven to despair yeah persecuted not forsaken struck down not destroyed always carrying in the body the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies why we go through suffering the life of Jesus may be manifested in this body praise god hallelujah the life of jesus the very life the zoe life the very life of god may be manifested through this body in the weakness of this body the life of jesus may be manifested so that the fragrance of jesus will spread through our life into others who are around us to our neighbors to our colleagues to our friends who are around us they may see the life and the fr- they may smell the sweet fragrance of the lord that's why the lord allows us to go through suffering what is the promise in there are so many many more verses why let me these are few verses but what is the promise of god when you go through suffering what is the promise of god isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 we all know this verse when we go through waters the waters will not overwhelm you when you go through fire the fire when you pass through the waters i'll be with you and through the wa- rivers they shall not overwhelm you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you verse 3 for i am the lord your god the holy one of israel your savior i give egypt as your ransom the lord is with you praise the lord in suffering people may move away let me tell you that's a fact your closest people your friends the people that you rely upon they may just go away when you are in happy moments they are there but when you are in the most severe bad times of your life they may move away they may they may not be there they don't want to help you but let me tell you one thing the lord is going to not leave you he's he becomes more closer in the times of your trouble in the times of your challenges the lord is going to be more closer that's why sam is 23 and verse 4 even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil because you are with me hallelujah 
praise God. In the sufferings or in the most trials of your life, that's when God is giving you an opportunity to experience Jesus, experience the Lord more intimately. That's an opportunity for you. My father, who was in the ministry now in, with the Lord, I have seen very, very severe sufferings in his life. Very severe. Not only just in the ministry level, in several levels. There was only one or two times in all his life I have seen him disappointed in sufferings. Sufferings you cannot imagine of. He would always, there will be, for a moment, little time, he will be a little sad, but he will come back with greater, greater strength, with greater faith. After every suffering, he will be coming back from with greater strength. Suffering was to the extent of he attacked his body. He had the brain hemorrhage, actually. But that did not deter him. That did not stop him. He still persevered, endured through everything. And it built him, it built his hope in the Lord. And I've said this several times over here. At the last days of his, uh, I mean, of, of his life on the earth, he heard from the Lord. He saw the angels coming and taking him away and calling him, beckoning them, beckoning him, say, come on, it is time for you to come home. He had that hope. Suffering is inevitable, my brothers and sisters. Don't run away from sufferings. God has a purpose in every sufferings that God brings to you. There are some of you seated here. I know that you've come through a lot of sufferings, but you, you can testify. I, 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 I wish we, in the coming days we can actually have some testimonies how sufferings have shaped you, how sufferings have built your faith, how sufferings have come, brought you to the purposes of the Lord. Then you can say with the psalmist, it is good that I have been afflicted. Because I've learned your statutes. I've learned your word. I've learned the truth. I've become more closer to the Lord. The Lord is with you. Psalm 34 verse 14. This is another promise that the Lord has for us in the times of Psalm 34. Oh, I have a wrong verse. The, the, the verse is, uh, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will Deliver them from all. Again, I want to tell you, let us have an eternal perspective of this deliverance. I hope you understood. It is not just temporal. Don't just see that in a temporal way. If somebody has that verse, can you just... I have a wrong verse. Eh? Sorry? 10, 34, 19. Eh? Okay, 19. 34, 19. Uh, okay, 20 in this world. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Praise the Lord. And we want to see this happening now. But many times it is not that. Many times it may not be. Many times I'm telling you. But definitely we know in the eternity we are going to be delivered from all these struggles. But even here you can be, if our faith in the Lord is so strong, even in the midst of that suffering, you can sing songs of deliverances, songs of salvation, songs of joy, songs of rejoicing, even in the midst of that. See, that's the real deliverance. That the suffering has not bound you. The suffering has not limited you. You are still rejoicing in the Lord and praising the Lord. You are shouting shouts of victory through through your, through, your, in, through your heart. Praise the Lord. That is what is the victory that we need to have. James chapter 1 verse 12. We know there's another thing which James talks about. Why suffering? The promise of, in the suffering. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the? Amen. There is a crown kept for you when you endure through all the suffering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Sufferings are inevitable. The Lord will be, but the Lord has promised that I will be with you. Praise the Lord.
if this morning any one of you going through any kinds of suffering if you're going through any difficult times i just want to help you to understand god has a purpose in that suffering he is not breaking you he is not trying to destroy you he is telling you my daughter my son i love you so much i want to come close to you i want to shape you i want to see my image in you would you yield in the times of suffering yield yourself that's all we are called to do yield yourself totally in times of suffering rejoice in the lord jesus says that rejoice in the lord peter says that rejoice in suffering paul says that rejoice in all sufferings of life no matter what kind of suffering we are going through rejoice hallelujah praise god several people i know who are seated this morning over here who can testify from their life the suffering has been good to me hallelujah it was very hard when i went through it when i experienced it it was very hard if your eyes are on the cross if your eyes are on the eternity then you will rejoice in that suffering praise god shall we stand in the presence of the lord and worship him and glorify him